Well, thanks, Fred. So we have all this wonderful software, new features, some big, some small. Our prepackaged applications are already using it. You've got a lot of material that you've made over the years or decades that we need to bring forward as well. How do we get these improvements into your users' hands? But before that, why? Why migrate to 7.2? Ultimately, it's because I want us all to be successful. When you're successful, we're successful. And that comes down to user adoption. I know as a customer of DI, you're doing important work, bringing data sources together, transforming, curating the data, making it available to your users. Um, but if your users don't consume what you've delivered, delivered, not only do you feel bad, but they're not no longer able to take action. That's the whole point. That means it's going to be worse for the business. You're going to end up with uh, unhappy users, unhappy IT management, and unhappy DI employees. So when I look at that pie chart that Fred showed, I think that maybe there's room for us to be even more successful. Yes, I know. I know there are folks who are very happy, thank you very much, with the models from 1995 that they made, and they're using in ProDiver, and everything works just fine. But maybe we can say that there's some untapped potential there. What I'm going to do now is talk about the differences in the major versions and how to move forward methodically without going crazy. <clears throat> I tend to think of software versions as technology levels. Maybe that betrays me as a fan of science fiction a little bit, but with each new generation of our software, more capability has come with it. We have on this slide here are major versions across the top. In blue, we have the foundational technology, and in green, we have the client interfaces. Now, I can't summarize all the differences between all the major versions of our software over 30 years or so in one slide. So instead, I decide to focus on uh, the key elements that really matter to what you, you can deliver to your users and what are going to impact your migration. <clears throat> to make this concrete, let's think about some features that would matter to your end users. These are new features in the 72 gateway. The question is, how do we get there? All of these features, whether they're the basic features such as my library, shortcuts, inline documentation, and I don't mean basic as a slight, they're, re they're really great, and more advanced features such as my dashboard, ad hoc reports, the dimensions page, and the measures page, all of these features we want to deliver to the end users have prerequisites in terms of the foundational technology and client interfaces you're using. So I think a good method to get from where you are to 7.2 is to think of these three steps. Step one, just upgrade the software. Take whatever you've got, install 7.2. It'll, it'll continue to work. You know, if you've got models of ProDiver before, now you have a prettier ProDiver. If you had a portal before, dive for, you've, you've got you've still got dive for it. If you're already using Measure Factory, it continues to work. We don't turn stuff off or throw it or, or, or discontinue it even when we want to. So those features will all work. Now, if you're going from way back, you know, 6.3, 6.4 dive port to 7.2 dive port, will some of the portals need some nudging around, some of the portlets? It's possible. Uh, it may not be pixel perfect, but all the, all the technology continues to be supported. With that out of the way, you're going to go on to picking whatever basic new features you might want to implement and try to implement those. And finally, consider the advanced new features. And as you're looking at these features and deciding what to implement, you'll find that you need to iterate and upgrade some of the, of the foundational technology, increase your tech level, level up, if you will. Let's consider some scenarios. So suppose you're on, it's 1998, you're, you, your technology, you've got ProDiver, you've got models, and you're going to go to 72 Gateway. So you upgrade the software, it's the same as before. Like I said, there's a prettier ProDiver now. And then you decide, all right, well, I want to try this My Gateway interface. What do I need for that? I'll need dive port, so I'll install dive port, and now it's possible to access these basic features here in step two. And you can see we've got here uh, steps that you might follow and steps that we might use to help you get there. Okay, but what if you are starting from, let's say, the 6x series? You've got you've got a dive port already. You use ProDive. You've got models. Okay, step one: install the 7.2 software. Step two implement one or more of these features that now are available to you. You can use my library with models. Uh, you can have the shortcuts in your dive port. You can add the line documentation. That's all available to you right away. Now, if you decide you want some more features, such as the ad hoc reports that are in the dive tab interface, well, that requires CBases. And so you're going to need to move some of your, your capability, or your, your, your tech level, to the CBase level. And you know, we'll, again, help you with that uh, as much as you need. 
What if you already have C bases? You're starting at the 7.0 level. You've got dive port, pro diver. You even got maybe you have dive tab. Well, step one, install 7.2. Step two, uh, implement whichever these features are sound good to you. You've already got the foundational technology you need. Want to go further though? You want to hit these advanced features, my dashboards, the measures and dimensions pages. That will require Measure Factory. So now we make an improvement to the foundational technology. We level up, and this is how we could do that. Now, I've talked a lot about these scenarios, pretty pictures and slides and lots of words. It might be better if we sort of showed you what an end user might experience uh, along the way. Um, since I'm in Gateway already, I can go ahead and uh, switch to a different section here. Let's go back. Let's rewind the clock to 1998. If you are coming from a situation where you've just got ProDiver and, and models, uh, what might that look like? Well, your My Library interface would just be uh, shelves and buttons that launch ProDiver. So any of these could launch ProDiver in a particular place. You can bring up your ad hoc reporting. You can bring up your lovely green bar reports. And users at least have a, a, a place to start them out and steer them in the right direction. You can even launch ProDiver in a dive book. If, however, you're currently starting from uh, a dive port, uh, you made a nice portal, maybe back in, in the mid-2000s, it maybe looks something like this. You're like, well, what is this going to be like? Well, if you see here, we're in the My Library interface. Uh, it's still the same content. We've actually embedded it in the gateway executable here. Make it seamless. Uh, you've still got, of course, all the options you expect. Now you've got the same green bar report. Now it's being served by dive port. It's embedded on this page. And you can still launch ProDive. If you're coming, let's say now from uh, Spectre, C-Base land, uh, your dashboards might look a little lot more like this. Uh, similar ideas. Now we're backed by C-Bases. Everything's interactive as you would expect, lots of, lots of filters. Um, you can even have some ad hoc work via an embedded measures portlet here. Um, and you've got some additional reporting options, right? We've got now the dive tabs, ad hoc reports as an option to you. Uh, you can you know, dive on, on these things. You can uh, change dimension. You can set the quickly values and save a, save a shortcut, uh, share the shortcuts, et cetera. It's all available to you. And there are some pretty cool reports here. I like this one in particular. This is for a particular account, show me where in the world it is and what the picture is. It's kind of cool. Um, and so you get that. And you still have the ProDiver option if you want to give that to your, your users. And finally, if you took a Measure Factory installation, maybe you've got a bunch of Measure Factory based applications already, or you're doing something with Measure Factory yourself, you want to bring that together. Same dashboard capability as before, but you can also add some other options. You might have a stamp based dashboard like this one. Everything's live, tied to the actual measures. Uh, here are some other examples of what you can do, right? And we also have some new analysis options. Now, here's a matrix portlet showing a bunch of measures down the left side. You've got numbers based on time ranges. All the numbers are live. You can click, you can switch dimension, you can dive, you can filter. We're also talking about measure factory and did a lot of work in defining what these measures are. So we could bring up an overview of what the measures like, the definition in English, the calculation in spectral calc language, trends, et cetera. And that all fits together in this, this interface here. Um, we even have the measures and dimensions pages that uh, uh, Stan already mentioned and, and showed you earlier. Those have a nice place here as well. And, and you have, again, all the things we had before. Those reporting options, whether they're green bar or dive tab based, you've got the ability to launch ProDiver. Pop back to the, the migration presentation to finish up. Uh, a quick note for complex sites. If you've got a single installation of Diveport or don't even have Diveport yet, all at once migration to my library makes sense. You can likely do it yourselves, although it will help you. If you have many applications, uh, you've got different projects and different departments going on here, it might make sense to do an upgrade, maybe one application instance at a time. And, and if you want a single entry point, in that case, you could use DI Bridge for that. The, the bottom line here is that small steps, we hope, can lead to increased adoption. You don't have to do everything at once. You can opt into technology leveling up when you need it for a particular feature. Uh, but don't worry, we're here to help you. We can help you make a plan. We can help you implement that plan if you want as well. And uh, just to show you that this really is, is worth it, here is some nice uh, words from some customers of ours who have recently done 7.2 migrations. Peter from Mercy at, uh, in Baltimore says that he, he really appreciates the self-service uh, options here. Colby at uh, UPMC Western Maryland 
uh, is a fan of the inline videos to help the users orient themselves. And Sam at PedalFast uh, really loves the sharing uh, capability to make those shortcuts and then share them among groups of, of users. And it's my hope that very soon you and your users will be among them as uh, people who have happily and successfully migrated to 7.2. Thank you very much.